just are either because you are out of faith, you are always a speaker. As in the historians are saying that the Prophet already saw it was Salam. In another way, the second part of our Shahada, Muhammad Rasulullah, we are sure he was born in the year of the elephant. But nobody knows exactly what was the day and what was the month that he was buried there. What is shown that he died on Monday on the 12th of every hour. That is guaranteed here. Yeah. But the prophet's birth and the death never been part in, of Islam except a sign. His birth and his prophethood and his death was a sign of the end of the prophethood and the closeness of the Qiyam. But his teaching is our Aqidah. What he taught us to do. And part of his teaching in his real life is his akhlaq. So tonight's lesson will be about the akhlaq is our aqidah. And the akhlaq of Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam is the akhlaq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to follow. So what I will do, we will go, we will go to Surah al Akhlaq in the Quran. Some ulama call it Surah al Akhlaq. And that is Surah al Hujurah. The Surah of the Chambers. And the Chambers mean the rooms of the Prophet Muhammad's wives. We call that Hujurah. And each room is a light. And whatever happened in each room, Allah told the Prophet's wives to narrate whatever. Whatever you said to them, they have to expose it to the world and tell the Muslims what happened in their rooms from the life of the Prophet. So in this surah we have not ten commandments, we call it nine commandments. Do and don't. And this is a, the pinnacle or the top of akhlaq. And to go into it, I will say first that the Prophet said, The best among you on the day of judgment and very close to on the day of judgment are those who used to have good akhlaq. And he said, A believer, due to their good akhlaq, they will be on the same rank of someone who used to do tahajjud and fast during the day, due to the tahajjud, so good akhlaq. And also he said, one of the things that is very heavy on your scale on the day of judgment, taqwa Allah wa husnul khul, is taqwa. And taqwa Allah means when we say, for Allah's sake, I will not do this. For Allah's sake, I will do that. Because sometimes we want to do something and we remember somebody and we stop doing it. And sometimes we decide not to do something and then we remember somebody and then we go ahead and do it for the sake of that person. So taqwa means when we do or we don't for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will be on the one who is stopping us or Allah will us. And then he said, Husnul Khul, having a moral, noble character is one of the ways that will make our mizan very heavy. So because we are not prepared for tonight, I will just go straight to Surah al Hujurat and go through the nine commandments of the Akhlaq. Number one, Allah say, Fatabayanu, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu. All you who believe, talk to the believers again. One of our um, uh, ingredients of a faithful person, we don't just believe what we heard. We can believe what we have seen because that is Yaqeen. But what we have, Islam say, you have to find out and clarify. Do not act on what you have because you could go wrong. But this is the order number one to the believers. Especially in the time of social media, we have the audio shop and the video shop and all of this. We have to clarify and we don't just based on what we have. It is divine order. This is akhlaq. And when we have Akhla, we will say, I will not take my brother and judge him based on what I heard about him. I will do what Allah told me to do. I will go and find out before I take an action. This is order number one. Order number two, for Asli, 
You know, in our social life, sometimes we have problems to one another. Sometimes we fight, sometimes we have this agreement, and then Shaitan will use that to make us forget the religious ties between us and let emotion run up and we have a fight among us. Allah telling the Muslim society, once we know this struggle thing between two people, our social responsibility for us to go by the Ahawai Bring the peace and the good respect between these two brothers. This is order in the Ahlaq of the community. We don't want to believe physically together, but mentally we are apart. This is another order in Surah Al-Hujurat. And the third order, وَأَقْسِتُ Be just and fair when you are judging between two people who have a dispute. Because sometimes two people dispute to me, and then I incline to one of them. Maybe for what? Maybe because of relative or friendship or they do me a favor. So I did not bring justice. And if I don't use justice, I'm not allowed to judge between two people. That is the akhlaq in which we call it, this is our aqidah. We have to deal with justice whenever we judge between two people. And we don't let the race or the, because we are same language or because we work together, make us be unfair to the other person. So justice is the akhlaq of a true Muslim. So this is do, do, do. And the next one it says, doubt. Wala tajassasu, do not aspire on one another. Only when um, I have a, a, a mind that is not clean, and filthy mind, and I am so low that I enjoy finding the aura of other people and aura being their mistakes. We should not aspire to find what people are hiding. Part of our akhlaq, for example, we don't force people to tell us what they don't want us to know. When something, if people want you to know something, they will tell you by themselves. But we stop digging, finding out, and trying to find who did wrong, who didn't do wrong. We don't aspire there. If people cover themselves up, it means they have iman. That means they have iman. If people cut somebody, hide them because it is what the Prophet said, Kulli ummati mu'afa ibn mujahirun. Some people in my ummah, they do wrong things, but they do it behind walls. They don't publicize that means their iman makes them do that. And the higher Allah gave to them, Allah will pardon them on the door of judgment. But those who publicize it, they will not get that uh, forgiveness. So we are not allowed in Islam to find out what people are hiding or to try to find out what are the wrong things in people's life now. So wala to get so and also wala yakata ba'du kum ba'da another doubt do not beg by to one another. We have to talk to one another face to face and look at the person in the eyes and say brother what you did is wrong I don't like it I don't do it again. Why I'm telling you this because I don't want to talk behind your back because Allah told me don't. And our, the akhlaq of our iman will allow us to do that. And then I will say that how ugly it looks like, a question to all of us. Will you, in your sanity and sense, see your brother who just died? Will you sit there and eat the flesh and the body of your brother? We will say, no, we hate that. Even I will say, fakaritu, no, you hate that. If you don't dare to do that, also, don't backbite the your brother. That's what it means here. So, wala yakta ba'du kum ba'da. Another order, don't. Wala tanlizu anfusakum. We have a surah calling surah to go mazah. Start with, wailu likul lehu mazate no mazah. What is lams? Lams is when we use our body language to build somebody or defame somebody or make them angry just with the body language, with our eyes or our lips. For example, some countries and some culture, you don't need to say a word to make somebody become furious. No. And every culture has that language. You know. We call it body language. So don't do this to other people. It is haram and lamas. And also, وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ Do not call one another with names we don't like. For example, 
if I know that this person doesn't like that name, we don't call them with that. In another way, if somebody is is tested and I'm not testing them, we're making them blind. We don't call them, oh you blind, come here. It hurts. Or somebody with one eye. Oh you one eye, come here. Or somebody with no arms. Is this the numbers of the Al to bully people verbally and hurt them in a way that sometimes the wound we cause can never be healed and they can go to their grave with that, with that wound. When you hurt somebody with sword or knife, it will be healed here, but when you hurt them with words, and that's why we are told, when we are fighting, be very careful because the quarrel and the fight will end, but what we say can go on forever. So we don't talk when we are angry because you're going to abuse somebody and give them words that they can never forget anymore. And sometimes people can forgive, but they can never forget.